Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Hi there, Jason Ryan for AmericaSpace.com. Today we're going to take a look at one of the vehicles that help power the Saturn V moon rockets to the moon. They help power the space shuttle program for 30 years. And NASA's hoping they'll power not just their new space launch system, but their commercial crewed efforts as well. When NASA was reaching for the moon, it looked for a vehicle to carry the massive Saturn V rocket to the pad. Marion Power Shovel was contracted to develop and build the two track crawlers. Little did NASA officials know at the time, but the two crawlers would become a fixture at Kennedy Space Center. They would be modified to carry the space shuttle to Launch Complex 39 during the 30-year course of the program. Now that the two shuttle is retired, NASA is working to refurbish the twin crawlers for use in the new Space Launch System, or SLS. America's Space spoke with United Space Alliance Representative Terry Berman to find out what is being done to the two crawlers to prepare them for this new mission. We started our tour on the outside of the crawler to get a sense of scale. And the first thing that became very apparent is the crawler in its current condition is definitely a work in progress. It also highlighted the fact that these vehicles are undergoing renovation and you really got an idea of the sense of the nuts and bolts that made the shuttle program in Apollo the excess that it was because this is really the beast of burden that got them to the pad. We also got a chance to check out some of the new features that USA and others are putting onto the, onto the crawlers, like the, uh, the brake shoes you see there. Uh, you can see the renovation work they're doing, the refurbishment they're doing these things, and you just get in. You get, just are stunned that this isn't a, a building or a structure. This is a vehicle that moves around. I mean, albeit at a very slow pace, but it's a vehicle. But if you look at it, it looks more like a building like something is built there but it's not and it just is stunning to see this thing and it also kind of goes against your general theme of what spacecrafts are with streamlined slick smooth looking this doesn't describe the crawler we see here it is not streamlined and it is very bulky I'm looking behind me here and there's uh, the AC and DC engines and I guess this is one room on the crawler but there's obviously more rooms. How many engines over the crawl can we have in it? Okay, there's a duplicate room just like this next door so there's four engines total. Okay, you've got a AC generator here that is brand new. You've got the DC generator that we're rebuilding and it's going to be like new. And then same thing on the other side. All right, well, I've seen, like, I can see the sky technically above me, with actually the roof, but when the crawler transporter is stripped down, what, what's its maximum speed? I'm sure we can get some of the weight off. I mean, it can, it can give you a little something. I mean, all he did was right, right. The biggest thing is the vibration. You get going too fast and, and things start vibrating. So two miles an hour without anything stacked on is max speed that we would do. Okay, two miles an hour now with that, uh, how many miles per gallon do you guys get? Um, 32 feet per gallon. So it's not it's miles per gallon, it's feet 32 per... 32 feet per gallon. We have two 2,500 gallon tanks that we top off, and that gets us to the pad and back with plenty of fuel left over, but you're talking about a lot of fuel. Now when you're talking about you know, going to the pad, obviously you're not going to come off now. What, what kind of speed would you like to see when you're going up to the pad? Okay. With a stack. Um, with a shuttle, Apollo, a SLS, with any kind of stack, we like a cruising speed of about 0.8. So 0.8 off yeah. Now, when we uh, did a practice run with the ML, the mobile launcher that they're going to modify for the SLS, we came up to close to 1.2, and then we had to slow down because it was starting to vibrate too much. And, and so, you know, so we were actually out here for the ML test, and I'm guessing that's what you guys were testing to see how it fared as you slowed up and sped down. Right. We did all kinds of speeds, we did emergency stops, and, you know, we wanted to see how that thing was going to react to, to, you know, never had an ML on a call. 
All right, Terry, we're actually inside the cabin of the Caldwell Transporter now, but before we actually touch on some of the change that, that you're doing to improve this for the future, why don't you tell us a little bit about what the Caldwell Transporter's history are, as well as what NASA's trying to do for the future with these vehicles? Okay. Uh, before Apollo program, they knew that they needed something to be able to move this giant vehicle from where they put it together to the launch pad. And so they found a company called Marion Shovel Company that uh, dealt with coal mine equipment. And they said, yeah, we could build you something. And what they did was they designed this crawler, and it's the biggest machine ever built. And uh, built us this back in 65 is when it was, one of them was completed. And the other one was completed right after that. There's two crawlers in 66. Uh, and it was used to transport the first space program, uh, going manned space program, which was the Apollo program, and uh, it supported that whole program. And then we went into the shuttle program, and there was a few modifications that we did on the structure itself, and it supported 30 years for the shuttle program. And then the Ares, which was uh, part of the Constellation program, that uh, we did a trial run and, and took it out there and actually launched Ares from Pad B. And now we're upgrading it for the SLS program and uh, more modifications because this could be a heavier lift. We're gonna be able to lift, uh, it was designed for 12 million pounds, we'll be able to lift 18, 18 million pounds. So, so it's gonna be modified to carry an additional six million pounds as required for SLS. Correct. Now, I know that it's gonna be used on SLS Orion. Let me go back to Susceptible Shuttle. Uh, when you change between Apollo and Shuttle, were there a lot of changes? You say, it seems that there wasn't a lot of changes that need to be made to it. No, no, the crawler itself, I, they updated some of the old technology, but as far as major, changes like we're doing now, no. It, this has never been done in the program and you know the, the modifications that we're doing now uh, is a major change for the crawler that it hasn't been through ever. Now besides SLS, the, the crawler transporters will be used for NASA's commercial efforts and their commercial partners as well? We're hoping. Uh, you know that hasn't been solidified yet but sure we want to be able to support anyone that can use a crawler. Sure. Okay, right now we're standing in one of the two cabs that actually drive the crawler. If we were to be going in this direction, of course the driver would be in this cab. Uh, this is where they control the speed. This is the speed pod. The small steering wheel that you see here is what actually steers these big heavy trucks. Um, we have some commands for the steering. We have bells that'll go off if we go over six degrees. That's the maximum turn radius that we can do with the crawler. Um, it's not installed yet. Again, this room is under construction, but there's a brake pedal right here. And what that does, we have two types of brakes. We have a service brake and a parking brake. The service brake is what the actual uh, driver will use when he wants to stop. And then the parking brake is when we're going to actually stay still for a long period of time. And then also, here continuing across the console, we have an emergency stop. We have people that are monitoring all kinds of systems on this thing. And if anyone calls an emergency stop, the driver will hit that, everything just stops. We'll skid to a halt. So, uh, you know, we don't use that unless we have to, but we have used it in the past. Uh, here's some new technology that we have. We actually have a touch screen for the laser docking. And what that does is it tells us exactly where we're at within the thousandths of an inch to be able to go in and out of this building, the VAB, and over at the launch pad to be able to line up exactly where we want to line up the vehicle. You're probably asking yourself, well, why did you speed everything up? We wanted you to slow it down so we could take a look at all these really cool things and, and check out the crawler, you know, in more detail. Well, there's a little problem there. If we had done things at the actual speed it took us to traverse the entire length and width of the crawler transporter, it would take, this video would probably be about an hour and a half long. Now, uh, if you want to pause it somewhere along the way and check it out, be our guest. But one of the things we hope that this video shows you is the sheer immensity of these vehicles. They are huge. They are more like buildings on tracks than they are vehicles. America Space would like to dedicate this video feature 
Neil Armstrong much more than just the pilot.